play was written in 1591. Um, the first record production was March 3rd, 1592. Um, it's first published in Shakespeare's first folio in 1623 uh, after his death. Um, and then it is a history, obviously, um, but obviously parts of it are fictionalized. For example, um, Henry VI, who was a youth um, during this play, was a, Shakespeare writes him older than he actually was during the time of events. So I'm just going to give you guys the, like, at the heart of it, this play is about the English and the French, like, and the conflict, and it's essentially about, you know, what happened when the Sox, I mean, the English took over. The <laughs> uh, it's essentially about um, the French trying to regain control of their territories lost, and sorry my voice will crack probably a couple times, and then it's, um, so it's about after Henry V rule, and then it's the beginning of the War of the Roses, which I think Kleiss is going over today. Um, so this is the beginning of that, and then it's pretty much the encompassing rise and fall story of Joan of Arc. So those are like, that's the bare minimum right there. So here's the, the focal characters. I have the names, you can fill in the blanks, but English are in red, France is in blue. Um, Lord Talbot is the uh, leader of the English forces in France, super important. Uh, Richard Plantagenet, I think is his name, He's, he becomes Duke of York, that's super critical um, after he makes a petition to the king. Then you have Duke of Somerset, um, who is pretty much in contention with um, the Duke of York, and that's pretty much what launches the Lord of the Roses. Then you have Joan of Arc, who you, I hope you've all heard of, if you haven't. The door's right there, you can leave it. <laughs> and, uh, so she's first uh, the French to a lot of victories, obviously. Um, and then Charles, he crowns himself King of France, so he's pretty much the leader of the French. And then the Duke of Burgundy, who, just think the color of Burgundy, he was red, he wasn't English, he, he fought alongside the English. Now he's, he, uh, after Joan seduces him, he, I think he was originally a French war, anyway, it's not born. So here's the characters again, <laughs> write them down, remember them, please, super critical. One more seconds. Great. Okay, so Act 1 opens up. Funeral. Boom. Henry V. Dead. Three messengers come. They're, they're bearing ill news. They pretty much say three things. One, France is revolting. Two, Charles Dauphin of Dauphin um, is crowned king. And then uh, third, that Lord Talbot, their champion, the English champion, has been captured by the French. Bear in mind, Henry V was English. This is an English funeral. Okay, great. So Joan of Arc, back in France, uh, Joan of Arc emerges, she joins up with King Charles of, of France and um, leaves them in a victory against Talbot, who's been ransomed by one of the English dukes, and uh, to a victory against the English at Orleans. This is Act 2. The English then defeat the French at Orleans, they retake the city, um, and then Plantagenet and Somerset, back in England, um, begin a long-standing feud between two families, the House of York, House of Lancaster. Essentially, you just need to know this is the beginning of the War of the Roses. Anyone seen Lord of the Rings? Anyone? Hopefully. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. This is the Council of Elrond scene right here. This is what, like, <laughs> launches everything right here. So, and I think for the next two plays, so very important. Okay, Act 3, Plantagenet becomes Duke of York after making a petition to the king. This is what the whole War of the Roses, how it starts between him and Somerset, essentially just you need to know that he had a right to nobility and essentially discovers that from his off dying uncle. We won't get into that. Um, the French are defeated. Um, at, as a result, or in response to this in the aftermath, Joan decides to um, seduce essentially Burgundy, who is an English lord, um, to fight for the French again because they think he was originally a French lord. So that's very important too. Burgundy was for the English, now it's for the French. Act 4. Uh, King Henry is, is, goes to Paris, is crowned there in an attempt to quell a lot of the conflict and struggle going on there. Um, as a result, more uh, conflict ensues between uh, Plantagenet, now Duke of York, and Somerset. Um, and in order to quell the, the conflict within England between those two, uh, King Henry VI, who was remember, just a youth at the time, um, puts them both in charge of critical, uh, pretty much puts York in charge of infantry and then um, Somerset in charge of cavalry. Um, and Lord Talbot attacks Bordeaux, sorry I'm not really a French speaking person, um, and essentially is 
trapped, he's attacked from within the city and then from behind. Um, calls for aid, and um, due to their um, York and Somerset's conflict or contention, um, aid is not sent, and Lord Talbot falls, um, being a detrimental loss for the English um, and losing their champion. And also, I put a lot of, like, I'm just going to mention this here, I put a lot of themes and elements, ignore those. This is what I think the, the main theme of the play is, personally. I think the main theme is the fall of, like, traditionalism and, like, you know, they have, like, feudal law and stuff like that. I think it's a complete and transition into, I guess, like, what we, America and the world, experience in the 20th century of, like, traditional going to modernism. I think that that's kind of what this place is pretty much about. And that's what we have time for. Great. Great. Well done.